Hello and welcome to another scene. Um, I'm going to be trying uh, one of the new images, and this one is the covered bridge. And as I'm coloring this up right now, it occurs to me that uh, maybe this is one of those ones that I should uh, use multiple tones in, as opposed to stamping out everything in just black. So. Let me try um, using some maybe some greens for these trees. Like this could be a, kind of an autumn scene too, where I'm doing the tree, these deciduous trees in the background, and uh, uh, you know various uh, fall tones uh, for some spectacular colors, I guess. But uh, let's just do this one in green right now. Maybe it's the Kind of spring uh, version of this uh, scene. You know, speaking of that, um, sometimes it's nice to do the exact same composition, but do them uh, where they're you're depicting uh, different seasons, different moods, and whatnot. And sometimes those are fun to kind of display um, all together. Right now, I just took the Marvy pens right here. Uh, these are dye-based inks. They're the same uh, inks that are used in the uh, in the uh, pads, and I've uh, colored this whole thing in black. But I've gone back in and done a little spot coloring here and there with uh, uh, two values of green, and we'll stamp this out and see how it looks um, when using pens sometimes if you're using really super juicy ones you got to be careful not to uh, apply too much ink um, into your highly detailed areas because um, you don't want uh, the ink to kind of puddle up okay now down here I'm looking at this I, I could have brought some green into that as well but maybe I'll just do that with the uh, you know my stylus tool or you know you can do that with whatever type of tool you're using Okay, let's see. I want some rocks down at the bottom. Okay, that's the uh, uh, mossy rocks uh, stamp. Mossy rocks, small actually. And I'll just. Put, position this one down here in the corner, I think, maybe, coming, maybe going on, maybe even off the page, something like that, and uh, one of the really good filler images is a sedge filler, and I can put some of this here, just to bring in some additional texture, and this is the Maple Trio stamp, and why don't I, you know, approach this um, stamp in, in a similar fashion that I did with the uh, the background trees for the, uh, uh, the covered bridge. All right, now, this might be one of those pens that I, I re-inked in a previous video where I was showing you how to use a re, uh, the re-inking fluid to re-ink uh, pens. I also put some water in some so that really seems juicy so. Okay, masking up some of these. Um, I don't want the full tree, I just want, want to use the tops of them, it's just some background so I'm kind of masking off right here just using a ripped paper towel and stamp that in like so. Uh, could use some other ones, can it? Let's see. Let's use uh, the same stamp. You can see I'm kind of using the side of this um, pen as opposed to scrubbing on the you know the tip. That way this tip won't get all you know worn out. Okay. And removing a little bit of that ink just because I'm these pens are so juicy. I, I want to be careful about uh, not getting a real blobby looking image. Okay, let's see there. Not too bad. Maybe create another background out this way. 
or background trees, I should say. Yeah, something like that. All right. Okay. How about a nice mountain back of those trees? Am I really gonna have to mask off this? Go with the rocky peaks. This is black. I don't, you know, I'm gonna take some of this gray just to maybe knock down the value slightly on that black. What, I, what I'm doing is I'm tapping off some of that black off that pad. Okay, let's let's wipe off some of the. Tell you what, let's let's wipe off some of the bottom of this really good, so that it's really light down here and it gets darker as it moves up. And let's just see how that goes. Wipe it off pretty good on the bottom portion, and, and uh, I'm hopefully, hope, uh, and hopefully I won't even have to mask. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, see where it's really light there, and it moves down in there. And I like the gray, I think, you know, for most of it. Um, let's see if I can get a background mountain over here without doing any re-inking. Okay, so a little bit more depth back there. Okay. Um, that's the basic composition. Now let's start applying some inks. Let's go for a... Let's go for, you know, green grass and blue sky up here. I'm doing a lot of kind of more monochromatic looks of light. Um, all right, now I don't have a paper towel uh, over here. I should have prepared that before I started this video, but here's my masking towel, you know, and it's also my, I'll have to make it my cleaning towel, it's not even a full one, but this is how I clean um, stylus tools. You just, I just wet a paper towel like that, and uh, I just dab right into it. Okay, now this one was clean. I wasn't quite sure if that was stained with green or not, but this one has a lot of that blue. See, I just dab down like that, and see how that ink's starting to come off? Now, try not to hold it up here and press down too hard, because it's going to put strain on this over time, and, you know, sometimes in the haste of uh, working on videos or making takes at conventions, I've, you know, I've just been pressing, because, you know, I'm trying to get through these scenes uh, in a little bit quicker uh, fashion in those situations and I've pressed too hard and I've cracked off this. But now that's not to say that these are real fragile. If I just put my finger behind this and I press on that, I'm never putting any strain on this and these, you know, should last forever. But, you know, sometimes I'm lazy or just not thinking about it at uh, when I've been in kind of demonstration uh, situations. Okay, starting on. This is, uh, oh, I can tell there's some of that blue from the, uh, I mean, the uh, water from the, uh, you know, cleaning. So it's extra juicy, and that's never a bad thing when it comes to especially the first colors of ink that you're using on your scenes to tone. There's these mountains in the background. Um, See these areas right in here where you can kind of see the shadows on the design. Sometimes it's kind of fun to, um, it's a good look to kind of stay within those shaded areas like that to reiterate the, sh uh, the lighting shading scheme of the design like that. And, and it'll hopefully kind of look like, you know, I don't know, the, the word's not realistic lighting, but implied, kind of directed lighting. Uh, strategic lighting, I guess you can say. Might be more a better word, but, you know, it looks like, you know, you have this oscillation of uh, light and shadow within a given space, and that really make, starts to make an object, you know, seem a little bit more dimensional that way. You know, we're always, you know, everything that we do on... Uh, you know, when we're stamping something, 
and, and as I say this, I, there's, I don't know, there's a, I guess there's three-dimensional applications of stamps, but as far as the impressions go, it's always in a two-dimensional thing. And, I don't know, don't write to me and say, oh, but what about, you know, like a, you know, like a interior design sponging where you're using a sponge. Well, in rubber stamps, um, was what I'm talking about. Um, it's a two-dimensional um, thing where, you know, process we're doing. But, you know, in scenic stamping, uh, quite often what we're doing is, uh, or most often, we're kind of given the illusion of a space. And, you know, we can do that on the overall card, but we can do that on individual objects as well. And just shading and kind of, uh, you know, doing strategic shading really can, uh, you know, help in that process. Okay. Now, as I do this too, um, I'm going to try to use some alcohol based pens to go into the scene. Uh, for additional uh, detailing. You know, for the most part, uh, I think on all the scenes that I've done so far in these videos, it's all been about uh, kind of dye-based inks and, uh, you know, for the most part, this applicator right here, but let's try something different in this scene. Okay, streaks. And I'm applying a good amount of tone with my first um, colors. It's the uh, salvia blue. Okay. Mm. Uh, this grass isn't going to be blue down here, but uh, um, I'm giving it a kind of a foundation of a, a common color with the sky. And same thing over with these trees, so that things don't look so, um, I don't know, separate. You want them to be somewhat uh, related in a way, uh, at least with some base coat colors. Otherwise the scene can be somewhat uh, kind of fragmented in, in terms of the spaces, you know, you have the background, mid-ground, and foreground. Uh, you want it to look like the background, mid-ground, foreground, but you also want it to be um, it, it unified is what I'm, you know, the word I was trying to think of. Uh, you want it to be unified somehow. Okay. All right. Let's see, let's address the sky. Let me stick with the blue while I have blue on this tip right here. And then I'm gonna have to hold and go into a separate segment. I'm starting to approach that 16 minute mark. Sometimes, sometimes I only get 15 on a uh, the digital card, so. Okay, what I'm doing here underneath the trees is I'm making it a little bit darker because I want that to be the trees to kind of be anchored into that uh, terrain with the the use of shadow. So by giving those trees, um, you know, you're having them, uh, you're saying that they are uh, relating to the uh, the ground. You know, they're affecting it. Um, and saying that they're opaque, you know, you're, they're affecting the lighting because they're casting the shadow. Okay, let's get in those mountains a little bit more. See where I'm hitting those shadow areas in the mountain? Those peaks. Okay. I think gray up here in the sky would look kind of nice too, so... Okay, I'll get to that in uh, um, step two. All right, so what was that? That was about three colors of blue. And let me see, let me clean off a couple of these applicators too and get to some, you know, I'll pick out my green color scheme down here and I think some tans and browns for the, uh, the road and uh, 
the covered bridge. I use some green uh, grays up there, and um, after that we'll get to some, you know, uh, details using some uh, alcohol-based pens, and we'll get into you know some of the shadows and details around in the uh, terrain. Okay.